The way you get uh, bipartisan movement is not by agreeing that we need to create new institutions or we need different ways of government, governance, but deciding on a particular goal, an outcome, that uh, there's enough bipartisanship around uh, to pursue. Uh, in the Bush administration, it was no child left behind, the sense that American schools were failing, that we needed to do something to increase uh, student achievement. You can argue about whether that worked out well or not, but it was certainly a bipartisan, uh, bipartisan bill. Uh, and that bill produced institutional changes. So my argument is that if you can agree uh, congressionally or in the political process that there's an endpoint that is worth achieving, institutional reform can come along as part of the process of trying to achieve that endpoint. If you start with the goal of creating institutions that can produce better outputs, I think that is tougher to get, uh, uh, to get accomplished. Almost any reform you can think of is one person's positive reform and another person's negative reform. And when we're left to speculate about what the political outcomes might be of a particular reform strategy, it becomes more, uh, more politicized. Uh, uh, Bill in his paper talked about uh, uh, a very interesting idea, and that's uh, kind of a negative poll tax. So if you don't show up and vote, you get fined. And this uh, works in Australia. They get 95% uh, turnout. Uh, our turnout is, what, about 50%, 50 less than 50% in most elections. Wouldn't it be a good thing? If uh, people were fined for not voting, we'd get a lot of turnout. Well, that probably sounds good to you if the people who don't uh, traditionally turn out are uh, minority, uh, poor, and urban, uh, and who would now be turning out in greater numbers. It probably doesn't uh, seem so appealing to you if, uh, if your party consists of people who are more white than black, more rich than poor, more rural than urban, because you would lose control. So what seems a good kind of reform strategy in the abstract has political consequences that immediately bar, I think, any bipartisanship in pushing things, uh, pushing things forward. So and I, I would argue that there are still possibilities for, for progress, but they are smaller bore possibilities that don't have uh, high visibility because the visibility itself is a barrier uh, to progress. And I think there are many instances uh, that one can point to where, there, uh, where such reforms have occurred in the recent past and will occur uh, in the future. One that I've argued for a lot in terms of policy change, and I think there's bipartisan support for it, is uh, providing real information to uh, students and their parents who are shopping for a college about the outcomes of that choice. That is, how many students graduate, how many get jobs, how much do they earn down the road. Uh, creating that policy outcome is one that uh, both Democrats and Republicans seem to think is an important thing to do. And doing that would necessarily produce institutional changes because you'd need uh, governance changes in order to achieve that particular, particular output. So smaller bore rather than, uh, than larger bore, looking for uh, outcomes rather than processes uh, might get us to the same place that, uh, that Bill wants us to, to get to.